On the last episode, we dropped in the pistons and finished up the bottom end and of course stretched the rod bolts with the ARP lube. We got to talk about the intake manifold and now we drop in the head and of course with the gasket and all the steps and we got you all the good stuff and so you know, this is something that's gonna be just for you. Yep, and now you're all done. So hey, the update on the current manifold or the, or the current update on the manifold that we've been using or we're gonna be using. So hey, this one is just good. Right now, as the block sits here, it's already the pistons are snug and properly installed with the right piston ring clocking and the ERP rod bolt stretched well. So hey, now we go back to the workbench and let's talk about the heads because I want to talk about something with you guys. And here we are now. We cut our own intake gasket. Wait, we use this so it doesn't tilt or you know doesn't move around. Okay, here we cut our own intake gasket and we actually trace the actual port of this head. This way, we can port match the intake manifold perfectly. All right, so now you, you install this, you know, slowly because, you know, you don't want to tear it up and do the, another intake gasket once again. So it's going to be like annoying, right? Okay, there, because after you install this or put this on the head a few times, the holes of the intake manifold stud will be you know loose enough to be easier you can see here it's perfect right okay now we drop in the skunk 2 pro series intake manifold there you go all right okay we get two bolts and we speed this up so that you know we just tighten it quickly we use two bolts to keep it secured this way you can see here now we get a pen when we scribe the outline of the intake manifold flange onto the intake gasket. This way, when we use a nut and bolt to secure the intake manifold gasket onto the intake manifold flange, we know how it aligns exactly how it does when it's bolted to the head. This way, it lets us port match it better right and we had a video for that and the link will be in the description below don't worry about it it's about port matching and all that there you go okay now we go to the other side here get the lines up so that you can line it up good yes look at the intake manifold yes this one is gonna be an improved version of the type bar manifold that it had before because hey we're all about getting an improvement or getting even better improvements. Okay, now after showing you guys what to do here, we take off the intake manifold and the intake gasket, of course, carefully. But wait a minute. We got to check everything if it's good. And yep. Okay, now we got to actually write the name of Max name onto the intake manifold gasket just so that I don't misplace it, you know. All right, now let's go to the engine block on the stand. Okay, now here we are. Okay, as Honda suggests, putting three bond or Honda bond on the six drains before putting the brand new head gasket and because the deck is freshly resurfaced, this is gonna seal really good. Okay, that's three bond. All right, let's speed this up so it doesn't get too boring. So, you know, just put the right amount, you know, just thinly apply three bond or Honda bond onto the oil drain. Don't goop uh, too much of it because it's going to be a pain in the ass. It might cause blocking on the oil passage and whatnot. So in practice, you get this good. There you go. Okay, now we lay head, the head gasket on the deck or on the block. Okay, there you go, slowly. Now we put the dowels in place this way. The head gasket doesn't move around and it gets easier once you're dropping in the head. There you go. Okay, let's speed this up because, you know, it's going to get too boring again. We could put three bond on the oil drains on all six of them. There you go. And you, as you can see, it's just apply a thin amount on each of the drains. Because, of course, when you torque it, it's going to be good. 
Yes, sir. All right. Okay, now we slowly drop in the head. You know, make sure we align the dowels to the dowel hole on the head itself. So that it drops in good. Careful, careful. Don't move the head gasket, of course. Okay, there. It's dropping in. Good, good, good. All right. Now, we hand tight all the head studs or the head bolts. Make sure the head, head bolts are clean and well lubricated because, you know, you don't want to cross thread the block. It's going to be a pain because it's almost done or assembled. Okay, now here we grab the torque wrench and we go with the first step is 22 feet pounds. That's step one. Okay, we, we're not going to time lapse this because it's going to be quick. And of course, everyone loves to hear the clicking sound. Okay. We tighten it in actual proper order or sequence because, you know, they say that if you don't target it in the, at the right order, it might warp the head or not help the head gasket seal. So we always follow this sequence and hey, we've never experienced any blown head gasket due to improper assembly. So that's good in our book. Okay. Last two after this. All right. Sir, it's 22 feet pounds is the first step, all right? There you go. Yes, sir. All right. Now, second and last step is 63 feet pounds torque. Okay, we're going to do this now. Oh, it's taking far. Oh, crap. Oh, it needs more. Sorry, sorry. Okay, one more. There, all right? So the click is louder as you can hear. Yep. Okay. Now, as of course, we're going to time lapse this because it's going to take way, way too long. All right. There. Okay. Now, the engine, the head, and the block is totally sealed up and torqued. Now, it's going to be ready and good. Actually, the rock arms and all that are still being soaked in mineral spirits so that we can clean it and get clean and assemble it. That's the breather fitting. So, of course, in the next episode, we're going to put the rocker arms and all that so get it all finished up like a crate engine and also we eventually talk about more about the breather system okay so of course the next episode will be something really cool for you guys too right so now let's go back to the workbench and talk about the intake manifold and the improvements we're trying or targeting but let's look at the engine before we head to the workbench oh yeah it's all sealed up and really good okay now let's go all right, now here, because we're shooting for a maximum efficiency and even more improvements, here we ported the Skunk 2 Pro Series intake manifold to our current specification. And also, you can see on this angle, the port finish on the intake manifold, we actually did the updated version that we do from 2018 until current. So this is the current designer approach. And of course, for those wondering about this port finish, we actually made a video that we talked about our first work or, or the first stuff that we do the first version and then the one that we did until 2015 to 2018 and then this one the current one of course that video is going to be on the description below or you can click it here but of course you know you can watch that after this video so you can just binge watch and we'll have the another video or link to the description below for the idr intake manifold it's going to be this one and it's going to be down in the description, all right? And the other one that's worth mentioning is this one, the P30 intake manifold. That is because the P30 intake manifold in the ITR intake manifold porting video, we talked about the RPM range or the shifting point and even the RPM li limit that works that helps you cut a better lap time or quarter mile time given the appropriate gear ratios that you have. So you know it's worth checking out. And now see, that's an excellent reason for subscribing and hitting the like button, right? Because you got to subscribe. This way you can binge watch on all the good topics that you want to think about or what, learn about and improve your approach and projects, right? So you go subscribe. So now let's head back to the engine stand and put this manifold on the engine because we installed the rock arms and the camshaft, but without the belt. But we're going to show you how it looks because, hey, it looks really, really good. But of course, let me show you this before we go there to the engine stand. You can see we usually leave 
be and a half inch at before the intake manifold flange this way when we have to port match it onto the head we can get it to match perfectly so hey now it's ready to be port matched right but hey let's slap it on the engine first and show you guys how it looks let's go so we grab this manifold and we take it to the engine stand with us but first we put the rocker arms and the ctr cams here we test fit it without the rocker arms first of course we just want to see how it looks right yes because we're still rinsing the rocker arms but now here it's already installed and you can see the cam caps are there right and also here you go yes the intake manifold is right there of course it's not finished obviously but hey you, you know it looks really good it actually it helps me visualize exactly what it takes to improve the engine efficiency and hopefully you guys with the visual here you can actually visualize how it goes and of course the interesting part is you can actually see the direction or the flow path from the intake into the chamber and out the exhaust that's why we bolted we bolted on the header just so you guys can see it and visualize it in your mind right and actually i'd like to talk about this over here let me go back to the previous picture part of what i can visualize is as you can i can see i can visualize the induction coming in here to the chamber and then after the combustion or the power stroke comes out of the exhaust of course it includes how the cams rotate so visually when I, I like to look at this engine like this because i could actually tell myself or visualize if uh, you advance the cam gear or retard the intake cam gear of what it, or what it's gonna make or what intake manifold i change what it's gonna do so all that so it's you, you can actually see it sorry you can actually see the induction comes in here okay and then into the chamber and of course, after the combustion stroke or the power stroke, it comes out of the exhaust. All the while, the cam gears are rotating. So, hey, I'm still trying to figure out how to do a good visual on this, on this example of an engine. So that on the next episode, I can show you guys the diagram as I turn this engine. And of course, give you a better visual aid to understand how things go or how to make more power or get ideas on what could act in giving more power to your project or engine all right so as soon as the timing belt arrives we're gonna install it and actually like this we're gonna reinstall the degree kit even all the dial gauge this way when i turn the engine with the intake manifold and the exhaust or the header with it it can help you guys visualize what i see because it's gonna show you as the valve intake opens or the valve exhaust opens we can show you how the timing phase goes so you know you gotta hit the like button so that this video gets spread out to a wider audience because hey this is gonna be good stuff right and of course that's another reason for you guys to subscribe and hit the bell notification this way as soon as i get done with episode 5 of this video with all the diagram that i'm talking about you guys can watch it and enjoy it by clicking here